We're on the verge of the second international break, and the playoff races are heating up. Don't look now, but Ottawa making noise again. They won back-to-back -back games this week. Toronto's win streak finally came to an end at 11, thanks to a Daryl Watts hat trick. Minnesota's fifth straight win comes on Grace Sumwinkle's shootout winner over Montreal. And we will have another women's pro hockey attendance record broken on April 20th at the Bell Center. What's up, everybody? Rob Pizzo, Soraya Tinker, back with you for Hockey North, and I've got a whole laundry list of things to get through. So let's get to it and start with Ottawa. Last week, we talked about them making two moves at the deadline, and let's call it so far so good. They went back-to-back -back games. Of course, they're battling for that fourth and final playoff spot. Your thoughts on what we saw from Ottawa this week? I said it before. I think Mike and Carla knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. They're filling in their lineup and making sure they have depth and scoring, and I mean, Daryl Watts and Jenner and Rezova have been phenomenal, but team scoring, again, scoring by committee, that's what they need. Let's talk about Daryl Watts. But you, you look at what she's done this season, huge piece of this team. Oh, yeah. But we're heading into the international <laughs> break. Her name's not on that Team Canada roster list. And anytime somebody's going to start scoring the way she's scoring and contributing the way she is, people are going to say, why isn't she on Team Canada? So let me ask you, why isn't she on Team Canada? <laughs> well, let's just say Daryl Watts has always been a phenomenal player. I've played against Daryl my entire life and she's tough to go against. Uh, she was a star in college at Wisconsin and at Boston College, played well for us last year with Toronto Six and has been a star for Ottawa. And she's playing alongside one of her idols, Brea Jenner. And I think that that's been a huge aspect of Daryl's play and they find each other well on the ice and she's killing it. But I would like to see her on the national team <laughs> roster. <laughs> Let's stick with Ottawa for a second and talk about the Battle of Ontario. Because not only did Ottawa win back-to-back -back games this week, they snapped that 11-game winning streak by <laughs> Toronto. And I, and I remember thinking, wait a minute. They've had a lot of success against this Toronto team. They won yeah. three or four games. In those three games, outscoring them 13-5. to five. And we know how the playoff format <laughs> works. If you finish first, you get a choice of who you're going to face in the playoffs. If Toronto finishes first and Ottawa squeaks into that fourth spot, do we see them trying to avoid Ottawa? <laughs> I think so. I think every team has that team that they want to avoid yeah. in, in all seasons. And I mean, their streak had to end at some point. But again, I might be trying to avoid Ottawa, especially with the new talent that they've added to their lineup and the scoring that they have now. Or is it a motivational factor? I mean, you played. Could there be a point <laughs> where the players say to, you know, their coach and GM, no, no, no. We, we want to get a piece of them. <laughs> I think so. I mean, we, we love the physical play. We love the chirping. And I saw that definitely in that game the other night. So yeah. um, I definitely think that Toronto could try to avoid Ottawa or say, let's do it. <laughs> Before we move on, Natalie Spooner, another couple goals. Yes. It, it's incredible what she's doing. Uh, 15 goals in 19 games. And the next on the list as far as goals go is uh, Grace Zumwinkle at nine. Yes. It's not too early to start talking about awards, but are we looking at the... <laughs> First ever PWHL MVP? Most definitely. I mean, Natalie Spooner, she has proven this season to be big, strong, fast, and using all of those things to her advantage. And yeah. I mean, I think she's got a little bit of mom strength with her now. And <laughs> I mean, those goals that she's been scoring are, are highlight real goals, and she's proven to be consistent for Toronto. So definitely an MVP candidate. Someone who we thought might be an MVP candidate, because she's always an MVP candidate, Marie <laughs> Philippe Poulin missed her third straight game. Montreal ends up, you know, blowing that two goal lead. As I mentioned earlier, we've got the international break coming up for the Worlds. If you ask the Montreal Brass, I'm sure they would love for her just to rest up and get ready for uh, the playoff run. If you ask anyone who wants to cheer for Team Canada, they're going to say, no, no, head to the Worlds. What, what can we expect come Worlds with MPP hurt? And is it going to affect maybe the rest of the Montreal season? I do think that this is injury management. I think you don't want to over push her for a Worlds. I mean, she has to recover and be fully ready to go yeah. for Worlds. So I do think that she is expected to play. Um, but at the same time, it affects PWHL Montreal. And I'm sure her teammates want her back in that lineup. And we can see that they've been struggling a little bit without her. We've used the word record a lot this year because it is an inaugural season and a record is going to be broken on April 20th. I'm putting it right out there. Oh, Montreal yeah. and Toronto uh, at the Bell Center. Um, sold out in a matter of, oh, 20 minutes. And not only that, if you go on some of the third-party sites that sell tickets, they're going for more than three times the oh, face yeah. <laughs> value. You've got a big smile on your face. Uh, I know sometimes we've uh, overused the word record and maybe glorified certain things, but 
this is pretty incredible. Well, I'm wearing it. Everyone yeah. watches women's sports. And apparently <laughs> they're all in Montreal buying tickets. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're if you're not engulfed in the women's game and yeah. women's sports, I mean, it's our time now. People are watching. They're buying those tickets. And clearly, we're it's another record. I think it's so exciting for specifically for the PWHL, but at the same time, just for women's sport in general. International break is coming up, but we do have one more game that goes tonight, and it is a big one. We've got you covered on CBC Boston and New York. Of course, the big battle for that fourth and final playoff spot. Boston trying to keep things tight. New York need to win and need to win now if they want to stay in this race. Season is winding down. Thanks so much for doing this, as always, but that doesn't mean that we're not miking up players. These things have been fantastic. And this week, let's listen in on Renata Fast. She's starting. Oh. <laughs> oh. Huh? Yeah, how we doing that? I, I thought I heard you say that, and then I was I didn't check the goalies. I'm so excited for her. It's gonna be fun. Okay, you got anything for the mic? No. <laughs> this is my moment to talk to the mic. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Hopefully they're nice to I her. Know, you were nice, and then I was like, no, she's just horrible. <laughs> I'm like, I take pride in the nice shots from far out on yeah. the goalies in warm up. It's nice. <laughs> Usually, Rouge and I are given a stink eye when people snipe. Yeah. Nosey! Get on your feet! Toronto! <laughs> Not today. I stepped on two pucks today in pregame skate yeah. and like completely bad, like face flooded. So when I saw Allie How did she not look her right? almost do that, it was flashbacks. How are you? How I got your shirt today in the mail. Oh, is that really? Yeah, the, oh, it's the note is so cute. Oh, I'm up. This is such a good song. Be louder. Okay, let's go. This is placed. Happy birthday! Put your loving on me. Soupy's too good. Finally! This is a little bit. Miller yeah. snipes and you're a shooter. Let's go, shooter. <laughs> I'm the shooter today? Yeah, shooter. I like it. Oh, I'm still with the puck. Getting close now. Fast. 